Howdy everyone, my name is Ola and the research I'm, that I'm doing is about observing the effects of low-dose radiation on the lymphatic microvessels of the chicken cryoanthemic membrane or the CAM. Um, we are part of the Aggie research program with Dr. Quick in the Egg Lab and my teammates are... Mark. I am Joe Ed. I am uh, Harry. And I'm Swan. So a little bit of background on our research. So studies show that the effects of high dose radiation is well, um, is well known. We know that it impacts the structure and function of microvessels uh, by inducing apoptosis of lymphatic endothelial cells. But low dose radiation is not as well studied as high dose radiation. But we do know that it does not, it does not induce apoptosis but instead it affects the growth and repair of blood vessels and lymphatic vessels as well. So we know that low dose radiation affects endothelial cell function and by affecting the, cell, the endothelial cell, fun cell function, it can cause increase or decrease in the shear stress which affects the vessel size growing larger or smaller. So we also know that um, the shear stress affects the endothelial nitric oxide synthase, which, uh, which affects the, the chronic growth and remodeling of lymphatic vessels. So to study lymphatic vessels, the model that we're using is the chicken cryoanthemic membrane, or CAM. The reason why we're using this model is because it is highly vascularized, so we can see that we can easily visualize the vessels in this model. Um, it also allows for measuring before and after intervention measurements. So like measuring the radiate of blood vessels before and after radiation in our case. Um, it also allows us to visualize the vessels without dye just by using microscope, like we see in these pictures here, we can see the blood vessels and the lymphatic vessels as well. So in light of all of this, the purpose of our research is to use the CAN model to assess the effects of low dose radiation on the growth and development of, micro, of lymphatic microvessels. So the first of the two main methods that we are using is known as the flask method. We first sterilize all the materials with chlorhexidine and then dry them with gauze. Then we place the weigh boat inside the flask and secure a plastic bag through the pre-cut hole in the corner with a filter cap. And then we add 0.3 grams of calcium lactate and three milliliters of millicue water. And we crack a day two egg in the weigh boat under the PCR. Next, we add 0.06 milliliters of fungosome and 0.6 milliliters of antibiotics. And we finally fill the flask up to one fourth of the way full with DI water. Lastly, the plastic bag is zipped and carefully placed in an incubator for further observation. And this is an illustration of the flask method. Our second method is the cup method. So like Harry say, everything is clean with, uh, with ethanol and chlorhexidine and dry wood gauze to maintain the antiseptic environment. So the clean Ziploc bag was placed inside the puncture cup and um, a 0 0.3 gram of calcium lactate and three milligram of molecular water was added. An embryonic day two egg was cracked into the bag and 0 0.6 milliliter of antibiotic and 0 0.06 milliliter of fungosome was added to maintain that antiseptic environment. So, and then we're gonna cut a small slit on the side of the bag near the edge, and we fill the cup with uh, deionized water halfway up into the puncture hole, and the straw will insert into that puncture hole, and the egg was placed in the incubator for further observation. The illustration of the cup method. So, regarding these two methods, there was um, multiple variables that we've tested to see if they would enhance or hinder the survivability of the embryos. And uh, one of these things that we've tested would be the filter papers that would cover the eggs. Uh, for example, we used the Breathe Easy, which is used for cell culturing to see if they would uh, 
change uh, the amount of infection or like decrease the amount of infection the egg would get. We also tested with different amounts of calcium lactate, even eliminating it at one point to see if the egg could ha would have enough nutrition on its own without it. And in terms of the cup method, we attempted using Breathe Easy instead of uh, a straw for the straw hole and using a glass cup instead of a glass cup instead of a plastic cup because they were easily kept sterile by autoclaving. And in terms of the results, we were able to see that the cup models had a higher survival rate compared to the flask models. And in terms of the Breathe, breathe Easy results, we saw that when we use the Breathe Easy filters, the eggs came out very dry as a result of the filter papers stopping a lot of the oxygen from coming in contact with the egg. But using these variables, we were able to enhance our methods and uh, get these nice photos of vasculature in the embryos along with the major blood vessels uh, of the CAM. Along with what Jawad mentioned, some of the major findings of our comparison between these two methods was that the cup method provide a much more sterilized airflow to pour the egg compared to the flask method. Also, when it came to the holding of the egg, the cup method's uh, plastic baggie had a much more natural emulation of the eggshell compared to the plastic, uh, compared to the way boats more, uh, compared to the flask massage's way boat, which was much stricter on the egg's curvature. Additionally, when loading the egg, the way boat would co occasionally cause overflow, damage, causing severe damage to the camp. However, the plastic baggie did not have these issues with the cup method. Some of the future things that we're going to be testing is going to be visualization of the lymphatics under microscope and using programs that are able to record and measure it both in real time and over recording. Additionally, we're going to try and test if there's a higher survivability using liquid calcium lactate instead of solid calcium lactate due to other experiments in this lab having success with liquid calcium lactate. Additionally, we're currently growing the eggs in a CO2 incubator, which literature has stated to have a higher survival rate than standard incubators for the eggs. And finally, we're going to be injecting the eggs with various chemicals that are vasorestrictors and vasodilators to see their view effects on the micro vessels and practice mapping them out and testing them for radiation testing on the lymphatics. So here are our, our references. Thank you very much for tuning up to our, uh, to our presentation and we'd like to thank the Aggie Research Program and the Lunch Undergraduate Research Program as well.